Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming to this panel. Um, we're going to be talking about some stuff that happened on our campus recently regarding um, Professor Ford's class. Uh, my name is Myla Kwa. I'm going to be moderating the panel. I am an honor scholar, a policy scholar. Uh, I run the student organization SHAC, uh, Student Housing Action Committee. So if you have not followed us on Instagram, you should. Um, I'm also part of DSD, which is co-hosting this, Democratic Socialist in DePaul. Um, shout out to us for doing this. I'm going to pass the microphone down, and everybody else has one now, so uh, everybody can introduce themselves. But thank you so much for being here, and thank you for taking the time to uh, find out what's going on on your campus. Hi, my name's... Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Alex Preston. I'm a current junior here at DePaul. Uh, I'm a communication and education studies double major. Uh, involved in a lot on campus. Um, yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Hi, I'm Evie Grimmett. I am a junior anthropology major, geology and education, a double minor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Ellie, uh, she, they pronouns. I am a women's gender and sexuality studies and education studies double major, potential minor in anthropology. Um, and I'm a current RA for Mason 4 and will be the RA for, one of the RAs for B Street next year. Um, my name's Emmeline Percival, I'm a current junior uh, education major. Hi, my name is Okay. Yes. Hi, I'm Ella. Um, I'm a junior here, and I'm an Ed Studies and History major. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm a sophomore. I'm a double major in Education and Aesthetic Studies, and double minor in Anthropology and Latin American Studies. I'm also the Vice President of Committee for Latin Concerns, and a part of the Latin Latin. Hi, my name is Kaylin. I'm a junior here, and I'm a senior Anthropology major with a uh, double minor in Hispanic Studies and Latin American and Caribbean Studies. Um, I'm also involved in, uh, as part of DSD Executive Council, um, and I'm honor scholar on campus. So yeah, we're really excited to talk to y'all today, so we're going to go ahead and jump in with some questions. And there's going to be time at the end for um, folks to ask us questions, so if you have any questions, keep those in mind and save them for the end. Yeah. Fantastic. So, first off, can you tell us about your project? What message did you want the campus community to receive? Whoever wants to start, just jump in. Um, I feel like specific, okay, so specifically with me and Evie's project, it's gonna be continuing to go like through every single one um, that we're presenting on. If any, if at any time we can also like stop it and go through specifically every single one. Um, but specifically for me and Evie's project, uh, the assignment was to bring forth a conversation or something that we don't necessarily like understand or like we take for granted a lot on our campus. Um, specifically, Evie and I thought about how much money um, went into the business school when us as students didn't feel as though we were involved in any kind of conversations about the business school, especially the cutting of a lot of scholarship programs such as Posse and potentially also such as the Honor Scholar program. Um, but thankfully the Honor Scholar program has come back. Um, but we wanted to bring to light how much money was put into it and how much else we have kind of been cut as students. And I would also add that with our project, the way that we went about it was we printed out those flyers that you'll see back on the screen in a second. And we put them on a bunch of the walls in the business school to simply talk about how the business school is known as being one of the most beautiful spots on campus and how much money was put into making it beautiful and by and by putting up the posters we were disrupting that beauty to draw attention to things that have been undermined by higher ups and people in charge um and then since we're right here i could speak to this a little bit so me and caitlin did our project together and we had put together a sign that said school of greed and individuality because at the time we were reading a text called shut down the business school by parker um by a scholar Parker, um, and um, in that he basically makes the claim that 
um, schools of business, they don't, they teach you how to like fit into the managerial class. They teach you how to be greedy and how to be individualistic under capitalist society. So uh, when you walk into Harrison, now it says DePaul, School of Business and Leadership. So we wanted to kind of play on that and say <laughs> School of uh, Greed and Individuality. And um, to add to the like visual impact of that, we also made it seem like the signs had like fake blood on them. Um, just to kind of like get to this idea of like how um, we were kind of trying to, to, without saying it, say that like these ideas of greed and individuality in capitalist society kill community and that's where the like fake blood was supposed to be coming from. Um, and then we also had another part of our project where we did, we made fake fake money that had like, that's, we altered a little bit to say some different things. Do you want to say that? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to remember what the dollar bill said. I think it said of, instead of in God we trust, it was in capitalism we trust. Mm -hmm. And then else but I know that we also spoke on the yeah it says we put in capitalism we trust and then also um, there was something that said uh, land or land of corporations or something we basically were just trying to alter it to um, to reflect what is actually valued in society because in American society um, and also just put like the fake blood on that too to get at that idea of like ca capitalism and greed and individuality killing community the blood was also coming from our perspective as uh, people of color on this campus. We were just talking about how um, like POCs always have to prove themselves and, and that also diminishes like community because then they're fighting with one another and then even then when they do get to the top, they're still fighting to prove themselves despite making it so far. So that's also what we put the blood to symbolize and then we just hung that up around um, everywhere uh, in Harrison, yes, correct. Um, for our project, we um, put posters up outside the GCPA and created the illusion of a block door um, because we wanted to call attention to the last place that Posse New York was protesting, their removal. Um, and so we did this by creating posters that um, draw attention to the fact that the people in charge, their interest is only in the money that students can gain and that it doesn't come from the interest of students. Um, so that's kind of where our attention was with that. Um, so could you talk a little bit about like what the purpose of your project was and like what the assignment was too as well? Um, yeah, so kind of like the purpose of the assignment was to honestly create an intervention inside of the business school that kind of draws attention to the issues that we were reading about in our course readings, but also just like um, also acknowledging other like students and concerns as well. So like mine is not up here yet, but it was. Um, Mine at the bottom of my flyer, it just says students are profits, and I put that in there because I remember uh, when there was like that big meeting, I think it was um, last summer that they had where they were uh, talking about like, the business school, like one of the one of the big arguments that students had was, is it for students or is it only like for profits? I just remember like that phrase specifically, so I wanted to incorporate that in my poster right there. Um, <coughs> and yeah, it was just essentially just to draw attention to like things that, like everybody else has like, said as well, but also just like, um, but just like just thinking like critically about like what is like the school like here for? What is it really going to do? How is it going to help? Because like in, again the readings that we were reading about like it was just all kind of like going to like like what America was saying into like the managerial kind of like thought process and like managerial kind of like um, workspace as well. And just to speak to the assignment a little bit more and like some of the things that we were asked to do, it was just to take the knowledge that we were getting in that class and use it on our campus in praxis to create some type of intervention that would call the attention of the, the, the campus community. And it didn't necessarily have to be in the business school, but just because of what material we were consuming, most of our interventions did have to deal with the business school. But in that, it was very um, loose guidelines, I would say, um, just to give students the room to be creative and do what they wanted to do. And it was also uh, a project where we had the option to work collaboratively. And something that I know Ford talks a lot about in his courses is that learning happens collaboratively. So I think that that's why even all of us up here, for the most part, did our projects in groups um, so that we could facilitate that learning in community. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so our next question is, have you ever engaged in a similar project in any course on this campus? If so, what response did you receive from the institution? And also, like, what kinds of um, like interventions have you staged before? I, I know I've seen one at the least. So. 
Yeah, so um, I was in Ford's uh, disability class last semester, or last year, and we did a very similar project where we um, staged interventions on campus and we took a tour like we had planned to do on April 5th, um, where we like went around and saw the interventions. Um, some of the students in our class um, put a caution tape around the GCPA blocking off the stairs um, to show the inaccessibility of the building so that that day you had to enter through the handicap ramps and you couldn't enter through the stairs. Um, other students put like posters at the front gates of DePauw signifying the difference between the Green Castle community and the elitism that occurs within DePauw and how we think of ourselves as being a better space and like the discourse of it being like a golden island. Um, other projects that were done, um, you weren't in that class. <laughs> Those are the two I remember that stood out, but like during that day, like they were all still up. Um, we didn't have to go through uh, student affairs. They weren't involved. Um, so yeah, that was completely. Anyone else have a? Uh, so I was not in the class, but I do remember we talked to another student in our class who was also in that class, and he had made posters in the bathrooms, or on the doors of the bathrooms in Asbury, and they're still up a year later. Yeah, if you want to go see after, let's go right ahead, but long story short, most of the things were not taken down and some of them are still up. Um, and I know that this is something that we as a collective wanted to bring up just to show the draw on the comparisons of like how the institution reacted to interventions that have been done in the past and how they reacted to our interventions now. So as a result of the intervention that me and Caitlin did, we were we both received community standards with two um, code violations being like uh, not following poster policy um, and taping stuff, I guess, and then also uh, disruption of university property. Um, and you can see them right here. So it's Code of Conduct 10 and Code of Conduct 20. Um, and in terms of the disruption of university property, we had flipped over the rugs by the entrance to Harrison Hall um, and because they say to pawn them and we wanted to get away from like the DePaul branding and we put a bill on the other side instead. Um, so clearly very different reactions to interventions that have happened on campus and it kind of made us as a class think very critically about why are our interventions being criminalized so much so to the point of like multiple people in our class being called to speak to the police. Um, so yeah, that's why we wanted to bring that into the conversation and just if anybody wants to speak to that space of like having to um, interact with the pop police. Yeah, so I was the first student to be called in by DePaul Police. Um, I got the email on April 10th. I was very confused because it was like kind of um, vague in the sense of just like, we just want to talk to you about some things that you may have like, or that I may have like, some information about. So I'm just saying. This is thinking. specifically from Chief of Police, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so I'm just sitting here thinking like, maybe something happened by my house, that I just happened to be home when something happened. But then when I asked, like, okay, I can come in at like this time, and I asked what this is about, they're like, this has to do with the postings of. Um, posters in Harrison Hall. And I was like, okay. So luckily I had like, there's class like before I had that meeting. So when I talked to him about it, he was like, okay, this is weird. Um, I'm going to call them. So he called them and the front desk lady was kind of, and he was trying to be like, I can talk to you guys like instead. Like, don't like, like, she doesn't need to come talk to you guys. Like I can talk to her, like I can come and talk instead. And they were like, oh, well, is the student refusing to come? So and that says that was very jarring because I was just like, I've never had like an interaction with the police like ever in my life. So it was just very like nerve wracking, very like anxiety inducing. I just like didn't know like, what was going to happen. But like I just got there and um, Derek was trying to actually come back like in the room with me, like talk to them, but like the, the they would not let him come back with me. I had to like go back there by myself, which I was like fine with. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, and they're just asking me questions like, okay, well, like, what, like, what was this for? I was like, this was a class project. Um, just, it's just an intervention for the business school. And the cop was like, okay, well, what's an intervention? And I'm just like, um, <laughs> don't know how to explain that, but I was just like, it essentially is just like a critique. We're drawing on critiques that we've seen like in the business school, just like in the university, like in general. And it's just a bunch of questions asking like about the project, why we had to do it. I brought the project rubric with me. I was just like, this is true. Like, here it is. Um, and that kind of thing, and and he was like, okay, so it's just like no harm, no foul. I was like, no harm, no foul. It was a class project. Um, yeah, and then I was like, well, am I gonna get in trouble for this? And he was just like, 
well, I can't really um, say that because it's just it's going to go to um, student affairs, community standards. And I was just like, okay. So that happened. Um, and then eventually I got the community standards letter as well for, um, I think it was, oh, I got code of conduct 20, which is again like the public policy thing. Um, I have been hearing that, um, that like there were claims of, like my like flyer was hung up. My flyer was hung up, never hung up. I had it on tables. Um, so I was just confused by that as well. I was like, it, it, I never taped anything. Um, but just because it just wasn't in the right place was how I got the code violation. But overall, it was just a very like, I naturally have anxiety and it just made my anxiety like a lot worse. Like I couldn't really focus on a lot of things like the week that it happened. So I was just like, well, what's going to happen? Like I'm going to like get expelled. Like what's gonna happen? Like. I just didn't know what was going on. I was just very confused. I was like, with nobody else, like, I think it was like one other person in our class I got called in, but like, that was it. Um, so yeah, I was just very confused. And the main reason why I was just called in to the police station was just because they caught me on camera. I was like, I didn't feel the need to like have to hide my identity or anything because I'm doing a class project. I didn't think it was like, gonna get like this deep and then it did. So, yeah. I think something also kind of important to note, I guess, as the only person that's an RA up here, um, that RAs in and of itself many of the times have to do putting up posters in our community specifically on our billboards but also just in our communities in general for a job we get paid to do that basically um, so that we can share with our community things that are going on on campus and I guess for me and the intervention that Evie and I did it I understand the policy but it's also kind of like if another institution that is telling me to post up posters as a job and I'm not getting criminalized for it or I'm not getting like any kind of like conversation about it because it is what I'm supposed to do and then going to now a class project where I'm critiquing something at an institution that like everybody critiques not just me it's a very like double standard in this moment and it just makes me kind of like wonder what else is going to be like happening with like specifically like other student organizations and other students that are going to like potentially do any kind of other interventions or have any kind of other events where they want to post up posters yeah um so speaking of speaking to the police and having these kind of harrowing experiences are there any aspects of your identity that you feel were impacted by the way you were treated in the investigation slash community standards process. Anybody wants to speak to that? Um, I know, I know. Uh, Alex brought up like hiding your identity in, in like doing these interventions, um, and just through my work with DSD, I've I've been involved in campus-wide interventions that are not related to class projects at all, and because of that, I'm fairly familiar with um, some of the policies and also just the way that this institution tends to function. Um, and because of that, as women of color at a predominantly white institution, um, I said, hey, I think it's a good idea if we wear hoodies and wear some face masks because the state of surveillance at this school, actually crazy. Um, uh, and because of that, so me and Caitlin went to our intervention and we had worn hoodies, put on ma face masks, um, just and tried to avoid the cameras to the best of our abilities, which clearly impossible to do in Harrison now that it's been renovated. Um, but with that being said, I was the only person that swiped into Harrison Hall. Um, and in our community standards report, per the, the investigation that was conducted by the police, um, apparently we both swiped into the building, which is not what had happened. And given that we're the only Latinas in this class, um, I think that just the way that that was navigated and the way that we were identified was interesting to me and something that I did bring up in my um, intake meeting with community standards, to which they had no response and said that they would put me in contact with investigating officers was never put in contact with investigating officers. And you know, I think it's something that I, people could argue is like, oh, you're stretching it, you're making it about something that it's not. Um, I think you could easily say that, but I think most times when somebody says, hey, I feel like I'm being treated interestingly based on like my racial ethnic identity, um, I feel like there's usually a little bit of truth to that. Um, and I think it's always worth verifying that that's not what's happening. Um, and it's worth bringing that concern to the table. And I did, and nothing happened about it. So. Um, yeah, I wanted to touch on that too because in the report, like I questioned um, in my meeting that it said both of us like IDs, and like 
Medica said they had no answer and she was just kind of twisting the words of the report and I was like, well, it's in the report, that's what it says right there. Um, because I specifically remember stopping before we got to the door and was like, do you want me to swipe? And she was like, I can do it, like, that's no problem. And I was like, okay. Um, so for us to be both called in and they had no answer, she said she would get back to me on that. I still haven't heard anything. Um, so that was just confusing and I did mention to her that she asked me why we had the need to hide our face and I was like, well, this is exactly why. I didn't want to be, I used the word attacked and she didn't understand what I meant by that, but I mean like getting more punished than others in the classroom and it jeopardizing things that I'm um, involved in on campus. Like as VP of CLC, like I don't want the, me to be the face of CLC and then they think that we're an org that does all this like bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's just me like looking out for not only myself, but like the community and what I'm involved in, um, which she still didn't understand, but I actually, do have to reach out and ask her because um, it was a whole police report and it had every little detail down to the T. Like it mentioned that we were just standing there a few minutes looking around, and uh, which I just thought was hilarious because like the surveillance again, going back to that, was scary. Um, on the elevators, like we try to hide our face as much as possible, and they still figured out it was it was us and pairing us together, and we knew that Derek didn't submit any kind of. Um, who was in the classroom or anything of that sort. So I just had that confusion on why. Um, yeah, I was just thinking that like also like with this class that we learned that like even if it's not the individual's intention, it is always the system's mm -hmm. intention to be very intentional about who it criminalizes. And so I think that like saying that it's not a race issue is like not actually looking at the system in which we're operating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thank you for your answers. Those were very um, insightful. So for our, our final question, um, why is this something that all DePaul University students have a stake in or should have a stake in and why should they care and how could this impact them in the future? <coughs> My bad. I think for me, the biggest thing of like why this is important is because we had across the board like very different reactions by community standards and in Alex's case as the police in our conversations there was not a unification in the way that we were spoken to or in the way that we were treated because um, I know in my case I was spoken to very kindly and that is not the case for most of the people on this panel and I don't know if that was because I was the first person that went and towards the end they were maybe overwhelmed or something but I don't think that that's fair if it's Especially in me and Ellie's case, we had the exact same papers, the exact same everything, and yet our conversations were miles different. And I think that's important for overall campus to know, and because even if, yeah, all we got was like a formal warning, but next time it could be completely different if someone else does this. Next time it could be something more, who knows? But I think just knowing that there's a bunch of inconsistency on this campus and the people who are in charge, I think that's important. I think something else that's really important to also note was during my current, my intake meeting, um, me, Ella, and Emmeline all went together to give each other support because we didn't exactly know how this was going to go. Um, and we were all just kind of like anxious and I think that we just wanted to support each other in that moment and all three of ours were back to back to back, like two and then 2.30 and then three o'clock or whatever. And specifically, I was in between Emmeline and Ella's time and then Ella was called before me and Kelsey Wetley like presented my evidence of like me and Evie's project to Ella and even though she had all of the paperwork that specifically showed our full names and everything like that, she still presented like all of my evidence to Ella. And I don't know, Ella can probably speak on what happened during that, but she basically got us completely mixed up just because of whatever. It, it, to me, it was really weird and my evidence should, have, should not have been shown to somebody else. build off that was just that like I was showing your evidence and then I was like yeah that's not me and she was like are you she was like are you sure and I said yes I know what my full name is I didn't say that because that's kind of rude 
But um, I kind of want to go back to the like original question and that like why should all the pause students care? Um, an issue that we're going through on a lot of private campuses around the country right now is the issue of like freedom of speech and expression. And that we it was emphasized to me and I think other people on the panel um, during our conversation like multiple times like oh DePaul is content neutral we don't care what you're posting we just care that you post it to our guidelines um, as we can see from like the example from like Emmeline's previous class like that's just on paper may be true but like in reality it's not and that our stuff was specifically taken down because we are critiquing the business school and the administration um, although they may not say that I think it's kind of obvious um, and just that because we go to a private school they can use other rules like the posting policy to limit our expression and that they can say they're content neutral but like they're censoring specific things based on like little rules that they're not enforcing um, like enforcing around I know like my organization multiple times has just like put posters like not posters but like flat pieces of paper like around like the GCPA the UV and they've never been taken down they've never gotten in trouble but that was enough to warrant Alex like going to the police um, so I just think it's important that we all know that like Especially if you're here supporting us, you're probably thinking of the same ideas we do, that like your organizations could be impacted, your stuff could be censored based on like stupid rules that like not everyone is forced to follow. Um, I think also going off like the inconsistency, um, in the past like I've put up flyers in the UB with tape and they've been taken down. Um, and I was standing right there and the person that took them down just let me know like, oh you can't tape things to the wall. She didn't tell me to go to community standards and like get a violation. Um, and I feel like we also talked about that in our letter to the editor, if you guys saw in the newspaper. Um, just like the different information that was spread to each of us by the higher ups, telling us like, oh, this many people were called to the the, the pub safe, even though it was only two of them. Um, so like, I think that's just going off, like even if we do follow the, the, the code of conduct, what what's not to say that they might change it up and like change their own words later and just to get us in trouble um so even that was like very frustrating throughout the whole process hearing different information yeah especially oh go ahead no no go ahead sorry my bad. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah just kind of like going off that like as well um this is just something i feel like everybody should care about in the sense of like whether or not it's a class project or not like this can just still be just something that can just happen to anybody apparently like I didn't think this was going to escalate as much as it did, and I just think it was just very interesting seeing it all play out, and just like me being the first person to have to go to the police station, and everything I do with just like community standards like as well. I didn't think it was gonna blow up this big, because I'm just like, I'm just doing a project. Like I never thought it was like ever going to like get this big. Um, and it was just still like very jarring as well, just like kind of like seeing it, like all my classes go through this too. Just like we all like don't purposely put ourselves in positions to get in trouble, and none of us thought that we were going to be getting in trouble for this because again like we've seen like flyers things like around like like the school just like whether it's like an org or not or just like stuff like hang around and never like gets like taken down but in this sense like where it is a project where we are just in, like engaging with our course readings our course content and criticizing something is warrants to going to the police station getting community standards getting a warning like on like our record and I just think that's just very really, like not cool in a sense, so I'm just like still kind of just like confused, still grappling with everything as well. Um, it, no matter like how far it is, like I still want to like think about this moment being like, oh, this did happen, and like why. And um, oh. I was just gonna add that like hearing us speak, I realized that we never went over the poster policy a little bit. So like just the thing that we technically broke about the poster policy is that none of our signs had our names on them or like some type of organization attached to them. Um, and then even when Ford tried to advocate on our behalf and say, hey, this was for a class project, like, I'm the, like just basically trying to take the blame for it himself. Um, and then even later on when he put up some student projects with saying, like, Education 325, if any questions, comments, concerns, like, contact Derek Ford, like, even when he put those things up, they were still kind of, like, shoved to the wayside. So even when he did try to advocate it, a advocate for his students the institution made it very difficult and I think um, part of what this 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 reaction made us realize is that it may not necessarily have been um, something that was targeting students directly but rather targeting Ford who's a professor who constantly um, puts students in a position to, to cri not necessarily criticize the institution but think critically about what the institution is doing right and to take the knowledge that we gain in these classrooms at this prestigious ass 
school, right? Um, and actually put it to use and actually put it to practice. And I think that that's something that's really great that he encourages. And I think that that's something that the institution doesn't necessarily like that he encourages. And I, I could be completely wrong saying that, but that's just my opinion. Um, uh, and because of that, I think that like targeting the students was a way to target um, faculty that are outspoken, right? And I think that that's something that we're seeing across the nation as faculty get fired for, for like, saying their piece for speaking to their beliefs, right? And I think even more broadly, like, thinking of institutions that are rooted in systemic injustice, that are rooted in systemic inequality and racism, right? These institutions, you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Um, and in terms of, like, wanting to bring attention to this to the campus-wide community, it's just like, hey, we're being criminalized for literally putting on a class project, for just stating something that is kind of an opinion that's also rooted in scholarly work, right? Um, and even in doing that, what, what's to say that the institution won't further criminalize um, interventions from students in the future, right? And I think just as a campus community, being aware that this is happening and being on watch is really important because if we know that they're, they're trying to, to lessen our ability to express ourselves freely, um, we're, we'll be more prepared to combat that when that does come. Just to add to what America is saying, like this really becomes the most salient thing for me, um, especially when we talk about it like in our course content, we talk a lot about how the university encourages critiques inside, but not of. Um, and so like, you know, if we had come together and we had written a 20 page, um, like, uh, thank you, <laughs> manifesto about like, oh, like what we think about this, then the university would have been like, look at this great academic work done by our students. But because we thought that like we had enough autonomy to critique our university, um, then they were able to criminalize it. And then also, I think no no one up here is denying that a code of conduct violation was broken. None of us are going to deny that. We know that that is what happened. Did we know at the time that when we were putting up these posters that they that that was a code of conduct violation? No. Now we do. But I also think it's important to recognize that the reaction to breaking that single code of conduct violation, which is what most of us got with like special cases, and Alex who put posters on tables having to go to the police, it's like that is an extreme reaction to something very small, such as posters. I think that's also really important to keep in mind. And the thing is, this is probably not going to stop. It's already happening a lot like within other institutions, like America was saying. Um, but this kind of situation can also happen in so many other classes and can potentially happen to you. And we want to just like set the record straight and like be able to like explain that like you are able to critique a university, especially while you are engaging in it. Um, especially because a lot of us are very privileged to be here and we all know that but we are also allowed to critique it and we are also allowed to like especially with DePaul's like freedom of speech and expression initiative recently like we are allowed to say our piece and we shouldn't like really be silenced for it and I know y'all were speaking to like um, these codes of conduct right and I think something that is really uh, that's clearly displayed in this is how those codes of contact, conduct are enforced and how they're unequally enforced. Um, and I want to bring an example into this of a, so a few, back in October, um, DSD hosted a pro-Palestine protest in Bowman Park. We put up a banner. Um, we did so following all of the policies when it came to demonstrations and also um, putting up anything like banners, posters, anything of the sort. Um, and to which the banner remained up for as long as it was allowed to be up for the policy. Um, and it was also somebody, some students, I guess, or someone came and put a uh, small Trump flags in the tree stump around where we had put the banner. Um, and part of the policy when it comes to hanging banners and doing stuff like that, you can't put anything into the ground because it's considered a destruction of property because you're just destroying the, the grass, right? Um, so that was, to, to give y'all a sense of space, that was, you know that side door to the UB, that was those trees directly across from that side door, at which there is a camera, right? Um, I don't think they looked at the surveillance for the little Trump flags that got put up, they just took them away, right? So if they could have easily just taken down our projects, 
Why look at the tape? If you don't do it for every instance where the code of conduct is violated, then why did you do it with us, right? So it, it's really it's really telling how these uh, codes of conduct are enforced and how they're enforced unequally, and I think that's something that we also really need to pay attention to. And if it is something that this institution is going to stand on and say, hey, you guys have to follow this, then they need to tell everybody that they have to follow them. Um, thank you so much for your insightful comments and your insightful answers and for sharing your experiences with us today. I know this was a stressful time for everybody, so thank you for making time to speak to us as well. I'm going to open the floor to any comments or uh, questions other students might have or anybody in the audience. Oh, I don't need them. I'm pretty loud. All right. <laughs> I'm awesome. Alex, do you, did you ever get clarification as to why you were the first person that was brought in to the police station? Like, did you get to ask, did you feel comfortable expressing that with community standards or anybody as you were going through this process? Um, yes and no. I remember when I went to the police station, I was like, am I here because I was caught on camera? And essentially the answer was like, yeah, you're here because you were caught on camera. And like how it was kind of like described, it was like, they were just like looking at people with just like distinct features. So like I don't I'm thinking about that in the sense of like I'm trying to remember like what I was like wearing like that night. It's like yeah, I had on like a jacket. Um I had my hair in a ponytail and it was like kinda out, kinda big. So I think it was just like that sense, but I think it was either because like I was it was either that or just because I was one of the first people to put my project in there. But like even then, still just like really like um Drawings, I'm just thinking here, I'm just like, okay, everybody was in the building at her I'm pretty loud too. <laughs> I was like, everybody was in here at one point, so it's like really interesting how like I was the first one to get called in and um, everything like that. And like I remember like I had one of my good friends with me because I also had to document myself like doing the project. So she was just with me, taking pictures of me doing my project, and she also got called in. Not by the police, but like by community standards. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like you were not involved, you didn't like she wasn't involved with it, she didn't do anything, she wasn't even in the class. She just came with me to help with my project because it was, again, part of the requirements in the rubric that we had to have documentation of us doing this project. Um, so I think there's a lot of very interesting elements uh, there as well because like, I'm not the only black student in my class. There's two other black students in my class as well, but I don't think they like participated in it was, like, what happened. So pretty interesting that like I was the only black student that like did it and like still got called in and everything. Um, yeah, but I do remember going there and just be like, if I was caught on camera, like, okay, and they're like, yeah, you were caught on camera. So, yeah. Any other questions from the audience? You're welcome to. Yeah. Um, this is just a clarification. Um, first, for Caitlin, you mentioned that you were clarifying about the instance of who actually swiped in the comparison. So, who exactly are you talking to again in the police station? Um, it wasn't at the police station, it was in my community standards with uh, Kelsey and yeah, the police report, it was also funny because the police report, it was like blacked out and this was like, I'm very into like criminal shows, so like, this is what I see, I told my mom, like, you're going to see me on Cops or something, like, <laughs> and um, yeah, it said like, uh, both female, like, walked in and um, each swiped their ID card, but we only went in once through the side and it was America who swiped in and after we stepped out, like, that's when we had finished completely and we left, um, so... That's what I was yeah, and I thought that that was also very funny because I remember walking to Harrison and I go, hey, make sure you don't swipe because I'm about to leave. So I, I'm about to graduate. I don't want you to have to deal with any BS from this institution if something <laughs> does happen. And then something did happen. And then they said that we both swiped in anyway um, when I clearly remember telling Caitlin not to swipe in because of stuff like this. I think connecting to when Alex brought up like facial features again, like going back, we were completely covered. Like it wasn't even like I was trying to think back at so like what could have been popping out that they would have known it was me. But like my head, my hair was in a ponytail. I had my hoodie on. We had our our pink face mask on. <laughs> um, I had like gray pants. I had like black boots. It was nothing like that. Nobody else on this campus would own. It was like regular joggers, I had my jacket zipped up, a black jacket, so everything but my pants and our mask was black, but it wasn't anything like they told, they knew what my eyes looked like, they knew it was me, like, that was confusing. I, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about like, what the actual consequences 
expenses were? And then, like, in terms of where you, did you have to do any kind of service or activity or something? And then I'm curious, too, if this impacted your engagement or learning in other classes at all. Um, at least I know for me and Evie, we specifically had to have an educational conversation, which was our sanction. I had a lot of anxiety after that situation that made doing my classwork and my classes for that week and the, like two weeks after just like really difficult um, because it was just a lot. And then classes were like the other, with other professors that I had, we would have like 30 minutes where they would, the professor would take out of their day to talk about the conversation. And then that's also like, just anxiety inducing in general. So um, yeah, just the emotional turmoil of having to go through that kind of situation when you're not used to it is gonna impact how you handle your day to day. Yeah, I'll go after that. Like I've had the same sanction of the educational conversation. I'm um, just going over like just where in the policy I like violated. Um, I remember I was told like it wasn't what I had on my flyer, it was just where I put it. So like had I had it on like a bulletin board or something, it would have been fine. I just had my name on it, it would have been fine. Um, in regards to like how it was affected, like the rest of like class or whatever, um, I just went through like the week, like however long it was, like a week or two, where it just felt like I just couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. Like it just it was just like very stressful because like I've like just like 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 Evie said, like we we're not people who get in trouble consistently, like we don't put ourselves just to get in trouble and like I've never been in trouble with like the university or just like any school like in general at like this caliber so like trying to also navigate that as well has been like very difficult and like i remember like how how like to cope with things it's just i try to act like it's not a big deal don't do that's not a good idea <laughs> um and like i just had this point where i just like i just overall i just had a breakdown because i was just like what is going to happen because i genuinely was just going through this i was like okay i talked to the police fine maybe nothing will come of it but then when i got the community standards letters when i was like okay it's getting a little bit real and I was telling a breakdown about this I was just like I actually don't know where this is going to go from here like is it going to be warning am I going to get probation am I going to get suspended am I going to get expelled like there was just nothing to really like like I didn't know because these are not things that are very like much like publicized a lot of like what different um like depending on violation like what different punish like what the punishments are depending on like violation it's not like it's not like super like um this person, I'll just see this kind of like find like on the website. This is what I did. I literally went on the DePaul website and I was like, well, what is going to happen? And then that's when I found out it was it was probably just gonna be a warning. But like at the same time, it was still kind of like, okay, but like, what if it wasn't a warning? What if it was something worse than a warning? Because I have things that I want to do, like post grad, like I want to go to grad school, I want to do all this, and it's just like, how was this going to at the time I didn't know how this was going to affect the possibility of that. Because it's like it could I was, I'm already thinking like this is gonna go on my record. But it's gonna go on my records where other people are gonna know about it, and I have to say defend myself being like, okay. It was a project. I didn't like. Was not trying to like do all this and get in trouble? I was just doing a project, and that was just very hard to like think about. And then also just kind of going to classes and like, especially after like the, the article came out, I had people like coming up and like asking me about it. And there were just some people that I just did not talk to about it about this. Um, and they were just like, "Why didn't you say anything?" And it was like, I didn't want to talk about it. Like I didn't want to like have to keep explaining like the same thing I've been telling everybody else. Like it was a class project. I'm going to standards over a class project. I don't know how to feel about that. So it's just very hard and like I think I'm kind of like getting over it now that like it's kind of like cooled down a bit but like definitely during those like two weeks it was very hard to focus on anything because I just did not know what was going to happen. Um, so adding on to what Alex said about like the kind of like internal like emotional thing of like the embarrassment of like not wanting to tell your professors about like why you weren't turning in work as much because you had to be like yeah like I'm in community standards and it's stressing me out it's kind of like I don't want to tell my professors that. Um, I ended up having to because for my intake meeting, the only available times was during times I had class, so I had to email my professor and I was like, hey, I won't be here, um, meeting with community standards, sorry. Um, and in my intake meeting, they were like, you never have to miss class, but in the letter they sent, the way it was worded was like, if you don't reply or set up a time within like 24 or 48 hours, like, we'll go on without you. There was no option to like reschedule a meeting or like have a different time outside of the ones they had. So I did really have no other option, at least as outlined to me, than to miss class. Um, which obviously like we should not have to disrupt our other classes for community standards meeting. Um, I will say we all got, I believe, like the sanction of educational conversation. Me and Emmeline also had to make a informational poster, um, ironic, uh, <laughs> for violating like additional um, code of conduct, like we had additional code of conduct violations. We also had like blocking the ingress and egress of like a stairway 
because we had put caution tape or crime scene tape over a door. Um, there was another door right next to it that people could have walked through. I'd like to add. Um, although our, it would make sense for us to have additional sanctions because we did break more of the code of conduct like things than anyone else, except our additional sanctions, punishment, if you will, had to do with the posting policy, which our additional code of conduct violations had nothing to do with. So it didn't really make sense how they were unevenly like assigning sanctions to different people, because we all broke the same poster policy. Um, but we were the only ones, well, there was one other student in our class who had to make like an informational poster on the posting policy, which also just in general um, was kind of redundant and unneeded in my opinion, just in that it is, the student posting policy is like this big in the student handbook. There's really not much to make of a poster. There's like three rules. Um, uh, yeah, to add to that, um, I tried to appeal uh, my sanctions. Um, I couldn't meet with John Mark Day um, due to illness, um, but I sent him this really long email talking about how I felt that making a poster, explaining the poster policy was not an educational sanction and that I saw no educational value in that, and that like there was as much information gained out of me reading the form as there is me creating a poster. Um, I was also told that they were going to use my poster in the future, which just felt like exploiting your students to do your work for you. Like, if there's an issue with students putting up posters, I should not be the one to design your poster for that. Um, and I sent him this email explaining how I felt infantilized by these sanctions and that I felt like they undermined my intelligence and delegitimized like my educational project. Um, and basically, I got no response from that. Um, and he told me that he thought that my sanctions were educational. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> okay, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what order I saw these hands in, but I'm gonna go with Jill first, uh, Professor Sitarzadeh, and then Sarah. Thank you. Okay, uh, my question is, were there any male identifying people in the class that partook in this project? And if so, were they scrutinized to the same degree? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go with that one. Okay. Professor Sitarzadeh, would you like the microphone? Any, would anybody like the microphone? I can come to you. For accessibility, I'll say yes, but I'm a loud person. But I'll just say accessibility. <laughs> How you all doing? Thank you for sharing. Um, I don't like getting attention, so I'm going to sit down. Um, so yeah, thank you all for sharing. I'm going to put my professor hat to the side, because there's a lot you all can break down with in your class and even after about space and racialized, economized space and politicized space, but also um, abolition, like a lot of abolitionist frameworks, right, in terms of police. And on campus, as we're seeing right now, I just found out, I just got a text that there are state troopers actually on my campus um, for our protests. But one thing that I wanted to ask, and I wish he was here, but in regards to this idea of d many intersections of power um, and hierarchy, did you all ever discuss also the privileges of the, pro of the identity of your professor who actually did have insider knowledge on institutional policies and things and knowing his privileges, right, the various intersections of his identity and how it relates to also those of the students who are in his class in terms of in terms of the assignments that you all engage with. So that's my question. Okay. Um, I think that particular question is not necessarily something that we explicitly interrogated, but I do think that is something that we have thought about, especially thinking um, about the way that he has advocated for us and he has tried to use the many privileges that he has as a white professor at a predominantly white institution to try to make sure that like we don't have serious repercussions for this um but i think in that also recognizing that um his position does allow him to maybe do projects like this and conduct interventions like this and be able to advocate for his students at that level in a different way than it may show up for faculty of color right um and i think that that's definitely something important to note that i think we could have definitely um, had more conversation about, so I just thank you for bringing that to our attention. Sarah and then Paige. Okay. Um, so there was a counter demonstration at the Women's Center the night of um, this demonstration. 
um, uh, as a direct result of um, what was happening in Harrison Hall in particular. Um, so an anti-abortion sign was put on the Women's Center um, and uh, security cameras were able to identify the students who were responsible for it. They've been through community standards and sanctions. Um, so I, my question relates to, as someone who has a background in education myself, um, knowing that like a guiding principle for education is do no harm. Um, what kinds of conversations did you all have in class about doing no harm to the most marginalized people in our community? Um, and kind of what kinds of unintended consequences might result from an assignment like this? Um, I think it's interesting how you draw connections between the, and, and refer to the anti-abortion banner that was hung at the Women's Center as like a counter. Oh, I was told. They told me directly that that was why they hung it. Interesting. Yeah, I, um, it wasn't my inference. Yeah, no, th that's just a very interesting conclusion, or like even an interesting motivation given that none of our projects had anything to do with abortion. Um, our projects focused on what this institution is doing with its business school. If some people on this campus decided to take that as a green flag to put up something somewhere else on campus that's in no way related, um, is very interesting given that none, literally none of our projects touched on anything about reproduction, touched on anything about abortion rights, not even in the realm. Um, so I think that it's, it's a great thing that, uh, it's, it's, it's just really interesting that that's uh, the, that those are the, yeah, that's, those are the words I have. Um, I think it's interesting you bring up this comment of do no harm, uh, as our projects were a response to the harm done by us from the university. Um, the harm in like, oh, like, uh, like prioritizing what students should be here, like prioritizing like our access to resources on this campus, like the project was a response to the harm that's being done to us, not an intention to harm anyone else. I would also add that, as you can see, and even in the students that got community standards that aren't up here with us today, um, their interventions were signs, and I don't see and how any of these signs are doing harm to people who are the most marginalized on campus as the only faces are the board of trustees and even posse's faces are blurred out mm -hmm. and um those are board of trustees are not marginalized on our campus um so i think there really in this instance wasn't harm that was done with posters um not to say that interventions couldn't have done harm they absolutely could have, but in this instance, those were not, that was not, a, like, fraud. A, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, I have gathered my thoughts a little bit, but um, in terms of, like, even thinking about the, the banner that went up at the Women's Center as a response, right, if we're thinking about a, a anti-abortion messaging that is being sent that is inherently rooted in tactics of fear, inherently rooted in... Um, telling people that they don't have autonomy over their body, right? And that, I'm going to assume, is the intention of causing harm, right? And if we're looking at the projects that we conducted, there was never any intention to cause harm, and just because there isn't the intention, that doesn't mean that there can't be that impact. But I'm speaking to intentionality, because intentionality is important, right? And I think that in our intention, we were trying to advocate for the students on this campus, trying to advocate for the experiences that we have, right? Trying to advocate for the fact that there's this business school that's brand new that we weren't asked about. This community did not consent to a business school being placed here. This community did not want a business school here for the most part if we're thinking about the students, if we're thinking about faculty, if we're thinking about the petition that has over 500 signatures to say that we don't want a business school, right? Um, so if we're talking about causing harm, I think our projects in no way have that intention. If they did cause harm, um, then I think that's somewhere where a, a point of like somebody being able to interrogate their own identities, to interrogate why did this cause me harm? Is this something that I'm contributing to larger systemic issues through? Um, and yeah, just like I think those two comparisons are important to draw, but I think just the intentionality behind our projects is super important. Um, yeah. I also would like to add that uh, that being what had happened at the Women's Center, as they had told you, was a direct like result of our inter uh, interventions. I 
none of us were to expect that that would happen as our presentations, our interventions had nothing to do with that. And so we were not, I think it's, it's un, not unfair, but like, I don't, I don't think we would have ever thought that that would be a response to the business school. And so that being the response, and then I don't think that was, that's our fault. And not to say that that's what you're saying, but in general, like I feel like there was some conversations I had with people about the outside of this, with, about the what happened at the Women's Center, and they were like, oh, like, was it because of you guys? Like, was it your guys' fault that that happened? And I was like, no, how are we to know that that was going to happen? I think that's kind of also one of the reasons I was given for being called to the police station was because they were also investigating that at the same time and were trying to figure out um, who was where at what time. It's kind of how it was phrased to me, but like kind of go back to the MLI's point, I think like me being the first person I had to go to the police station, given like things like my features, everything, how like they cross-checked my identity from like a class roster to just like camera footage and then also just getting my friend, I think that's kind of harmful, given just like me being a black student on this campus and like whether or not I was the first one for my like project in the business school, I was still the first one to be interrogated about it. Um, and then also along with like Caitlin and America as well, like they were completely covered up and they still figured out who they were. And there are also women of color on this campus. I just think, and though, like look at like those senses, that's also just pretty harmful, but like also there's still a lot going on like, like at all times. Like I agree with everybody else like up here, like um, I think that's really like horrible that that happened at the Women's Center. Like I don't know where people would thought that'd be like a direct response to what we were doing because again like ours had nothing to do with abortion it was mainly just about like again our class our course content and our course content also said nothing about abortion as well it was just like the business school excellence within a university the global university um content like that just for the sake of time we're gonna uh take a question from Paige, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to some further comments from the panels okay i have two questions so i'll make it quick um, were any, speaking of the, the do no harm thing, were any School of Music students contacted about putting signs over the building of the GCPA? Because I know they're public buildings, but very frequently School of Music students are kind of like painted as the antithesis of the, build, of the business school. Um, and like, I've been protesting the creative school for years, so I'm, I'm a fan of it. But also like, if we're, if they're just going off of the fact that putting up posters is dangerous or is something that is uh, crim criminalized, then making sure that school music students are accounted for in that because they could be inherently criminalized as well by being associated, I feel like that should be brought up or were any school music students contacted as part of like the antithesis? Um, I will say, being you know, I'm on hours to stay and I spoke to a friend of mine who is in the music school and she thought it was a great idea. Um, our project also directly referenced the creative school and like music ed performance, like those degrees being sunsetted as well alongside like the introduction of the business school. She was very for it. She also supported us. Um, she was gonna let us use her ID to get into the building. She thought that music students could get in after hours. Not true by the way. Um, but I would say like with our project specifically, it, the music students were like an important part of it because the creative school also came about with business school. Okay, I had a second question as well. Um, I was looking over the codes and the things about egress and just general safety, um, and I was wondering if there are things that you would like, like what are your desired outcomes of this, like for more clarity or for more proactive assignment clarity and like getting those handbook rules ahead of time so that way you're more prepared to avoid those kind of outcomes? Because if we're talking about like egress blocking, like that could be that could have been taken further, and it makes sense that it it could make sense that it could be criminalized at a lower level because a worse version could be done of it that could really block egress for a lot of things. Um, but I'm wondering what your desired outcomes are. If there are more clarity, a different police process, things like that, um, that or things about posters in particular, because I what I'm afraid of is that people will hear this and be like, oh, I can't put up posters anymore, and like. In school music protesting, we've been putting, like, we've put some pretty, like, arguably egregious shit up, and, <laughs> um, like, we have not been criminalized for it, so I'm wondering what your guys' desired outcomes are of this. I would love to talk about the ingress, egress thing further, um, just in that the main reason we got in trouble for that was by blocking the door that blocks some students, like, entrance and exit of the building. Um, regardless of the fact it was a door next to another unblocked open door which someone could step a foot to the left and leave 
Uh, Derek brought up a really important point when he was advocating for us that the doors and like entrances, exits to pretty much all the buildings on campus are already like extremely inaccessible to people on campus. We have a very low physically disabled population on campus because people aren't going here because they know that they can't get into or out of the buildings. Um, he put it in a very interesting way that like the stairs themselves to get into the GCPA would be a code of conduct violation like if they were people and that they were stopping people <coughs> from getting into the buildings. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed like if you try to look like you'll notice that he Disabled entrances to all the buildings are in the back. They're very hard to get to. Um, they just overall, they're supposed to be there for accessibility, but they're just not um, if they're making you go extremely out of your way to get into buildings. Um, I don't know where the accessible GCPA entrances are, to be honest. All the ones I can think of, you have to use stairs to get into the building. Um, so I just think it's very interesting that like, when we use tape to block off a door that stops able-bodied students from getting into the building, that's a huge issue. But when like we make a campus that disabled students just can't access or go to, that's fine. So I just like I'm so glad we're thinking about accessibility, but I think we should think about accessibility for our disabled students before we're like, oh no, able-bodied students can't walk through this one door because there's tape over it. <laughs> I think more examples going off that, like the elevator for the business school that they spent so much money on didn't work for like a whole month, I think it was. Okay. Um, my first year I was in Lucy, there's no elevator. We were on the third floor. Um, it's just a bunch of stairs, and there was somebody who had an injury, and he had to be separated from all of us on the first floor, where there were still stairs that he had to go down, and I know he was struggling, like, with his crutches and everything, um, and then even then, to be moved in the middle after he was better, back upstairs to the third floor, for him to still be going up those stairs was even more difficult. The elevator is, like, very raggy, and it's only accessible to uh, maintenance with the key. Uh, which I found out because one day this lady did let me go in there, but it was very scary. I thought we were gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Paige, to answer the second half of your question, I think moving forward, it's looking for consistency and that sanctions reflect the severity of what occurred because the issue here is that we were just students participating in a class project, and that became a student affairs issue. Um, so I think that like our hope is for consistency and how these things are handled. And um, maybe my dream is some internal critique of what are you actually protecting. Mm -hmm. So I want to be mindful of people's time. Uh, obviously our panelists are still here past time. Um, so if you have any further questions, it would be great if you could ask them. Uh, or if you want to ask them, but otherwise, um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedules to uh, focus your attention on something going on on your campus. Um, please take whatever lessons you learned here with you, and also just be careful. Read the handbook. Um, it, it might it might serve you well, um, just in case you decide to say something against the university and uh, it doesn't go well. So, have a wonderful day, everybody. Um, and I just want to, on behalf of CSB, thank y'all so much for coming out. It is our Solidarity Week, um, and we have put on two successful events. We have our last event for Solidarity Week um, to tomorrow. In here. In here, actually. Um, so tomorrow we're doing uh, Organizing Postgrad, and it's a panel with some of our alumni um, and founders as well. And then there's going to be senior send-off at the Women's Center after with some food. So if y'all want to come by and celebrate some of our lovely seniors, That'd be much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for coming out today. Have a wonderful day.